And that left only one American woman still in the U.S. Open as it entered its second week. The number three seed, Martina Navratilova. Perhaps hoping for a Jimmy Connors-like run, those who crowded the stadium for her fourth round match were hoping that the oldest woman remaining in the singles draw could draw on her years of experience and rise to the top one more time. Awaiting the aging champion was an old nemesis, Elena Sukova, who at 28 was the second oldest woman remaining. The two had shared many battles prior to this encounter. It was Martina who defeated Elena in the 1986 U.S. Open Championship, her third of her four singles titles. And this, their 30th meeting, would be the first time that the two had met prior to a quarterfinal match. And the six-foot-two-inch Sukova came in at the top of her game. Martina couldn't love. Martina couldn't pass. Martina couldn't hold on in the first set as she lost control of the net, an area that throughout her career she had dominated. And she lost control of an opponent that throughout her career she had dominated. The hard-serving Sukova had stormed back from a 5-4 deficit and won the first set 7-5. And in the second set, Martina just lost control. Regrouping, Martina turned her anger to her advantage. But Sukova weathered the storm as each player held serve to four games apiece. And Elena Sukova was enjoying the ride. Then, in the ninth game, came the crucial break. And Elena Sukova found herself serving for the match against her longtime rival, who was still struggling to find the lines. pleaded with Martina, but Elena begged to differ, handing Martina only her fifth loss to the big check and closing the book on the four-time champion's bid for fifth U.S. Open title. For the first time ever in the 107-year history of the U.S. Open Women's Singles Championship, no American survived to the quarterfinal round. Everybody's always gunning for number one. Jim Courier, number one in the world, and the number one seed had been cruising. Clipping opponents like fellow American Malavia Washington. Courier had not dropped a set through three rounds. 
the path of an anonymous Frenchman named Cedric Hulin, who had unceremoniously ended the run of Mott's Wielander, led to a battle with the U.S.'s top gun on his home turf. Courier was trying to become only the sixth man in the history of Grand Slam tennis to reach the finals of all four Grand Slam tournaments in the same year. Cedric Pialin was fast making friends. The 24-year-old renegade Parisian was not only trying to win his first Grand Slam title, but his first tournament period. Under a gray and gloomy sky, Pialin gave his best to the best of the red, white, and blue. Frenchman came out flying, taking a dramatic first set 7-5 from the number one seed, the first set Courier had lost at this year's Open. As the match entered the second set, Healing continued to frustrate the American ace. But the number one seed settled down and battled it out as the second set went to a tiebreak. Courier took the second set 7-6 to six to even the match at one set apiece. In the third, Courier displayed the skills that had made him number one, but Pialin was equal to the task as they both held serve. And then at set point, Cedric handled Courier's baseline blast, delicately dropping it over the net and Courier had lost his second set of the tournament. With France's most famous export close by, France's newest export closed in. Pialin kept Courier moving around the court, and in a strange role reversal, one of the fittest players on the tour appeared to tire. and the unthinkable became reality. Jim Courier was bid au revoir by Cédric Pialin, who became the first Frenchman to eliminate a top seed at the U.S. Nationals since 1927. For the sixth straight year, a number one men's seed would not win the championship. <laughs>